Are we ready? Yep. Wonderful. Hi guys. Welcome to IOD TV. I'm Lynn from L&J Goods up in Medina, New York. That's way up in western New York by Lake Ontario. It's really good to see you guys today. And um, we're going to be doing a really fun project, kind of going back to like, let's review paintable transfers and how we how we approach them and, and I'm going to show you a couple of my little tricks that I use but this is kind of what I'm going to be working on today. Oh, there's a stink bug. Um, old buildings. <laughs> old buildings spring time. They're everywhere. New buildings and old buildings. You're they right. They are. Winter, winter. <laughs> I just hope it does not like crawl on my back or Do anything. Do you want me to get it? No. I, I, will, um, <laughs> I didn't know you were that upset. By well, I, they're really creepy to me. <laughs> There we go. And once again, there's some drama for the day. Yes. So it's really good to have you guys here. Um, has anybody tried a paintable transfer? Because you can do a lot of really fun things with them. And I'm going to be doing a transfer, layering a barnwood plank stamp over it and showing you a few little tricks that I have for that. And then we'll proceed into um, how I paint them in. So, um, Again, we are a stockist in Western New York, but if you don't have a local retailer, there's a link that we put up above so that you can go to ironorchiddesigns.com and find your local retailer or an online stockist. Like um, there are those of us that stock all of our of the IOD supplies and um, you'll be able to find somebody to hook you up. So, do we have some folks watching? Yeah, lots of people here. Wonderful. What a great way to start our Monday, wherever you are. So, um, I'm actually going to be using painterly, or look at there, I said painterly florals even, and we're gonna be painting these florals, but um, this is the Winter Song Wreath. This is the new format. I happen to have um, one of the older ones left from when I, I did this project, so I'll be using this. But what's really cool about the new format is these are 12 by 16, right? And what you can see, you can see what I did here is that I only use like a part of the wreath. I just think that that looks super cool. Like you could actually do a set of four of these, right? Yep. Separate them. But I would take like these out, for example, if I was doing that. Or not. Or not, whatever you want to do. But what I love is these sheets are 12 by 16, and that is exactly the size of these IOD wood gallery blanks. Very cool. So that's awesome. So, but for today, I'm going to be using another chunk of my wreath when they came in the whole, the big, the whole complete size. Got it. So just be aware that's not what it will look like if you were to purchase this transfer now. Right. The design would be the same. This is different. Exactly. So I'm just going to look for, um, I don't want to do exactly the same thing, but I think I'm going to do, because I, I think I do want to, when I display these, I want to kind of show them as four. So I want my arcs to go this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I am just going to cut this section out. Here I go with my scissors. And what I want to do is I, I don't want like straight cut edges. I don't want to cut off my floral, okay? So I'm going to be very strategic in how I trim around these florals. So I'm going to make a cut off, like I want this, like kind of right up to here with this this guy right here see that so I am I am just carefully following the lines I'm Krista not said trim don't chop trim don't chop is it yes especially she knows how to do it. Well, well, you know, I like to get things she done she gets it done right though but yeah. I wouldn't recommend anybody else chop, so, so I, I'm just gonna I am going to chop away so that this is a little bit easier. And you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So you see what I'm doing? I'm going to kind of bring this, sweep this off to the side. But up here, I, I trimmed around this floral. 
this one here, but I don't want these cut ends here. See that? that do, that's not a good look. Not too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carefully trim. I am making sure that I'm preserving that black outline around the flower, but guess what? Even if I chopped into that, I can take a Sharpie later and I can... Um, yeah, that's really nice, huh? What? It's almost just hard to mess up because you could, it's just black and white. You and really can, line, like here, drawing. see see how I cut a little bit out of my outline here? I can go back in, yeah, that's honest really to goodness, cool. like no one would really notice, yeah. probably anyway, so. What do you do it really yeah. is. So my frame that I'm using is, um, it's right here. I, is that Chance Parking? My frame has kind of a wider rabbit to it, so. Wider rabbit? A ra rabbit is the type of um, wood, like the, the gouge out here, oh. whatever that's called. Yeah. Still learning new things. Here. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. So I just, that for me, will you? Um, it's not like an actual, it's not a spelling like an actual rabbit. That's what I thought. No, it's but spelled yeah. differently, R-A. B B E T something like that. I know someone who's a woodworker here. So again, I don't mind if my cut edge is over along the edge here because it's that's the that's where the frame is. It's gonna cover it. So I'm just gonna take my little tool here, but anywhere here where I cut into that black outline, I can just fill that in with a sharpie if I need to. This just makes me feel like summer. You did? Did you have ice? Oh my gosh, really? And you know, it makes it like we always want our like our Easter, like at Easter time, if you practice or participate in Easter celebrations and do all of that, it's just Easter. Well, what, it's not everybody does, but um, the the thing is, it's like you want, it's like you just want warm sunshine. I can remember when I was little, like, oh, you couldn't wait to wear like your new Easter dress and I've very springtime. Wear an Easter dress in Western New York. Exactly, no. exactly. So we get these cute, pretty, springy, florally things, and then you have to wear a winter coat yeah. over them. So yeah, doesn't happen here like that. <laughs> we do try, that is for sure. Oh my gracious. It's like the kids are outside trying to do an Easter egg hunt when it's, you know, there's snow on the ground. There was a little bit of nice weather this weekend. Oh, we had beautiful. Lovely. And I think it's going, I think it's here it's going to get warmer, like yeah, this week. 70 tomorrow maybe. But that's I almost don't know. too warm. My mm. grandma always says that it's not spring till it snows twice on the daffodils. No, three times. Three times? I don't even think it snowed once on the daffodils yet. It hasn't yet. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, so that means we've got some cold nights. And do you know what? My mother has always been right she about that. She has always been right. And I keep thinking about it this year and how we're now heading into April. Yeah. And again, where you when you live where we do and some of those places up north, um, we've got an exceptionally long winter. <laughs> winter slash spring. Yes. Nancy it, says, remember the little white purses with the flowers on the top. <gasps> yes. And the oh. flowered hats. Oh, yes. my goodness. And the ladies used to Hi, totally deck out with the beautiful big spring hats. I love that. And, of course, my mom used to always wear a big corsage. She used to. Well, I guarantee yeah. she <laughs> Oh, my God. So true. So we're just, my you know. My mom loves to dress for a holiday. I don't know why this seems like it's taking so long. Please tell me it's not. I don't, I mean, I'm not doing that. Good. But I'm not the one doing that. Exactly. Always with the white gloves, Nancy, yes. The Nike, yes. We yes. didn't have white gloves, my sister and I. No, we were, we're kind of past gone. that. Yeah, we were past we had a that. Peter Pan collar. Oh, yeah. Love a Peter Pan collar. Matching bobs and bangs. 
<laughs> yes. Because I think mom was meant to have boys and not have to brush little girls' hair. Oh I do gosh. not blame you. Oh my gosh. Ben always just he had a he had a brush cut. Well, and he had, he had great a silky still. Oh, I'm bald now. <laughs> he had silky hair that was just laid. Oh, I know. Oh my gosh. So has anybody used this um, transfer? I'm so curious to know if you've done any projects with it. I think it's so beautiful. It has a very, um, almost a modernistic kind of look to it. And you can make it go in so many different directions. Uh, a while back on IODT, remember I did the wreath and I painted I painted underneath it? Yes. Um, chance. <laughs> I painted, I painted very watercolory underneath, and then applied the transfer over. That was, oh my gosh, that was one of my favorite pieces that I've done. I loved that. But you can, um, I've put this just as it is, like on a piece of white furniture, and it's so fresh and pretty. Um, but today we're going to kind of go in a little bit of a, I don't want to say country direction, but. Um, a little bit of watercolory, but I'm I'm putting barnwood planks on this again with the barnwood planks. After we What's did a shorty coat, Carol says, wire flowers pinned into her hair or Easter hat, white gloves and white anklets, and Mary Jane's. We wore shorty coats. I'm very intrigued. Oh, by I that. don't. Okay, I will know. be googling. What is a shorty coat? I, I, I bet you once we see it, we're going to say, oh yeah, of course, that's a shorty coat. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Of course, my mom used to sew and make a lot of our clothes for us. She's very, very proud because they didn't have a lot of money mm -hmm. at all. And yes. But she always made sure you were all dressed very nicely for church. Yep. Clean faces and clean hands. Yep, not this. <laughs> no, well, she was always <laughs> She worked hard, even if she couldn't afford it, I think, to make sure that you did. Absolutely. That you didn't look poor. <laughs> it's terrible. No, it's not. I think it's very resourceful. And oh, yeah, she inspiring. definitely was. Well, it's just very important to her. You know, it was another way that, like, my mom expressed her creativity as well. I mean, she... I, if, if any of you have been following me for a while, I have ex I've talked about how like one of my great inspirations for doing workshops here, even doing online workshops or our groups, um, is is my mom and how one of my best memories of her. I mean, she's still with us, but yes. but um, <laughs> is. Um, we lived in a really tiny, tiny town. It was a little. It was actually called a hamlet. It's right near where we live now. It's literally like we're already in a small town right now. And it's oh, but a it's even. It is this tiny town. It literally has one, two. It had three streets. Yep. It still does. Only yep. three streets. And church was right next door. And I, yep, we lived right next to our church. But I, one of my best memories of growing up there, and uh, was my mom would hold the she would get ladies together around our dining room table and she would create yep and it was the place to be it really was and event. it was so fascinating so there might be four or five six women depending on what my mom was kind of showing them how to do and i loved being a part of that and and you know, the other cool thing is, and, and this is what I love about like IOD also, like these products, this is something like you think about it, this this wreath right here in four, in four pieces, you could get this transfer and get your mom and your sister yes. and, and your cousin together and you guys can each create a piece of art. Yep. And, and you're gathering around, you're creating together, and it's so much fun that way. I think that's why that's why we join like I like the group pages like this too. We want that sense of community. I think it's an actual need. I and that's I think you're right. Over and over again, the fact that Grandma was doing it then, she continued doing it. She found a way to make a for herself, yep. teaching, yep. teaching classes because women are always 
And it's always like on to the next thing. Oh, we're toll painting. Oh, we're knitting. Oh, yes. we're crochet. Oh my gosh. Like, and you know what, Megan? Yeah. It's like I've done the same thing. It's what yeah. I've grown up doing. Even when I had a real job, yeah. I always had a way of, um, you know, expressing my creativity and, and, um, and getting people together to do that, you know? And, and it was true. I mean, knitting classes and all of that. It's just cool, I think. Uh, it just crosses generations. There is always going to be a demand for, especially women, to get together and have that sense of community it and create something. It is so true. It's so true. It's cool. and, and we learn from each other. This is IOD's um, ink in stone gray and barnwood planks. You saw me do this a couple weeks ago with barnwood planks, so now I'm just kind of doing the same thing. But yes, I'm going right over top. But you're gonna see that I will change that up. What do you mean by that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something right now. I'm gonna take a baby wipe. Oh, to blot it out. And now why did you choose to do it before? after instead of before um because i wanted to wipe away where my stamp wasn't oh i see so you wanted to be able to you want to control basically. yeah okay. yeah so i just take a baby wipe and kind of wipe away mm, cool yeah so it's not like showing over my flowers but but it's so cool like do you ever think about the fact that these are baby wipes and they literally will remove like permanent ink Deborah said she loves when you show us new things with barnwood planks. Thank you, Deborah, because I know oh. mom sometimes gets nervous. Like, oh, here I am with the barnwood planks again. But she always finds cool new ways yep. to use it. Well, and different little tricks that you can use to, you know, because sometimes you wonder, okay, okay, I have this beautiful floral. I don't want the barnwood going through my pretty peony flower, you know, because it's kind of supposed to be sitting on top of it. Yeah, and it creates a little depth, right? With it behind and the flower. Oh, sure. Yeah. And you're going to paint over it, too. Oh, I'll so. be painting over it, yeah. But, that's why I love, I mean, these baby wipes. So, and I might not get it all off of there, but at least I'm getting most of it off of there. It's important to say that underneath you're using a paint that has a built-in top coat. Like you would not want to do that with like a chalk style paint. You could. It's just going to remove some of that chalk yeah, style paint. I just think it would be messy. Yeah. So now another thing you could do is like, okay, let's go up here. Um, is that you could just do a part of this. See how I'm kind of working my way around? Oh, it's just to avoid having to wipe yes. a lot. Yeah. Yep. You could do that as well. And so I'm gonna. The board is just what, Mom? Like a piece of masonite. It's a piece or of masonite. Yeah. But like she was saying, I don't know if you were here earlier, but the IOD wood gallery blank, it's a perfect size, the 12 by 16, to fit one of the sheets from the new format of the transfers. Right. So with this pattern here, I'm kind of working around mm -hmm. instead of over top of. Now, like, what would you do if you felt like that was like a little too dark? Oh, then, okay, I could take my baby wipe again after it's on there for a minute or two, and I can wipe right over it. And it kind just of, to soften yeah, and see, it bit. kind of removes that top layer so of ink. I just think that's really cool. Isn't it fascinating? That's why I always ask you to do it. <laughs> I know. But, yeah, it just softens the whole thing. But what a difference is just giving it a little background mm -hmm. there. Like yep, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just, I want to use this edge here. I also think it makes such a subtle, great difference to use stone gray. Oh yeah, Over instead black. of the black. Yeah. Um, oops, I wanted this Especially side. Especially with the black transfer. But I like this, I like to use this to create those edges between the barnwood planks. Yeah. And not all, not all barnwood planks are perfectly straight. We know oh, that. No, no they're, they're not. And then you just clean up these with your baby wipes again. It's amazing though. I can never seem to get it off of my hands with the baby wipes, but man, it sure does come off of our stamp. It's because your hands don't have a built-in top. <laughs> right? They're not made of silicone. Mm -hmm. 
What are you going to use this for? Just a piece of art. Yeah. Like, see what I've done here? And I, I even, you know, we kind of dialed up the, the frame a little bit. But I could see this on the front of a, a very plain dresser. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just a plain Ikea dresser, for example. And you wanted to add some texture in the background. It would be yeah. super cute. All righty. So let me do one more little texture over here. And I'm using a very light touch because I don't want, I don't want, it to distract too much from this busy pattern that's already going on but if I get it over top of the leaf or over top of where the transfer is I can come in there and wipe it out as long as you have a top coat or a, a sealer that's on that would you say if you were to guess yeah have you used more baby wipes in the past year <laughs> than you did in the first year of Ben's life because I know you had to use cloth wipes when I was a baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I have. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, again, I'm keeping this very, very simple. I don't want, I'm not even going to put, like, a separator. I mean, it depends on how you're, how it's it, great. Yeah, it kind of depends yeah. on how it lays out. Oh, I can yeah, always like add it line. later. Yes. But I've got a lot going on with this particular section. Do you have a favorite brand of baby whips? Yes. I mean, we like well, I like I liked those when my kids were babies too. I don't know if you have a BJ's where you are at, any of you, but the BJ's store brand. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say that here, but I just did, and I have no affiliation with. That no, store, we don't. Okay, no. I'm not advertising, but that's just what we like. They're really soft, but also strong. Mm -hmm. Everything you want in a baby wipe. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> okay, so now I've got this on here. You want to make sure your ink is dry. That's another nice thing, using, using a light touch and wiping over it with a baby wipe, kind of... Um, Very light, so you're not smearing. Yep, makes sure that that's, that ink is dry enough for me to put a finish on it. So before I paint perfect. these, before I paint these, this is just a clear matte polycrylic sealer. I need to seal my transfer and my board. And the reason that I do this is because I want to create a, a substrate. That's the only word I can think of to use. I want to create a background for my painting that is consistent all the way across. Does that make sense? So I want it to be able to, I want to be able to paint on my transfer and, st and have it look the same as it does over here on this other painted surface. Yes. So what this does is this goes over all of it and will give me that consistent finish across the entire piece. So I don't have any like weird, like I'm not going to have um, the my it, whatever I, medium I choose to use, it's not going to soak into my paint over here, right. but not over here, mm -hmm. you know. And that's just a water-based sealer, a clear polycrylic, just a thin coat on there is fine. I'm going to have to dry this, so it'll only take a second. that 
you know, blow dryers are great for a situation like this or when you're in a workshop and you'll need to accommodate and be able to know how to do that. But when you're at home doing these projects, let them dry on their own. Yeah. It really does um, give your products a chance to kind of cure and settle and you don't have to be as careful with them. So, okay, I have a sealer over this. Now, what do we use to paint in these florals? I'm gonna go for a really watercolory look. So, um, again, not mentioning any brands, but you can use, um, you can use your paint brand as long as you can thin it with water. And, and if you want this watercolory look, you just want to make sure that you can thin it with water and then um, and practice. On and practice, absolutely. Take this little section here and just do something small. I hate to like after you went to all this trouble to prep this, you know, it just just practice on something. You know, it's it had been a while. It had been a while since I had uh, done a paintable transfer, and I had a board out. And and honestly, I keep. I keep in the storage area, my storage area, I have painted boards of different types of paint that we sell here and use. And I just I just have them back there. So, oh, I might try a transfer in here. I tried three different types of uh, watercolor and indie ink pens. Yeah. Let them sit, put a sealer over them. So I'm testing and I'm always practicing. It's just the best thing to do. Bethan, yes, she did put a clear coat over the paintable transfers. Yep. If you go back literally like two minutes, she explains exactly why yes. she did that whole work. Just about to move on to the painting. Part. Yep. So you can use your chalk style paints or whatever paints you happen to carry as long as you can thin them down. You can use regular watercolors as well. I've been totally into watercolor. I've been taking a watercolor class and I love it. Love it. Um... I um, am going to be, I pulled out a few different types of things that I use. These are India ink markers. Um, I love using those. These are permanent. And again, you'll need to, you just know what you have. These, all the stuff you can find like at a craft store or, you know. Um, so do those get watered down? These? Yeah, you're going to see how I do that. Um... I have, these are like, these are actual watercolor oh, markers. Yeah. Okay. These are watercolor markers. So, I love watching these. yeah, you can kind of play around and use whatever you have. Um, I am not opposed at all to just taking e any of our brands of paint and just mixing with water and throwing it on there these are these are like a uh, distress crayons that that you can use and then you thin them out with water I have a transfer stuck on my thumbnail <laughs> that would be a fun um, IOD TV to do just paintable transfers on your on your fingernails yeah. so when I use these markers I'm using a water pen or you can just use a regular um, paintbrush and water as well to kind of move that paint around. So um, we did clear coat first before yep. coloring. It's just to make a consistent yes. paintable surface across our whole surface because you can see like like in here for example I put some watercolor outside of my florals. I don't want that to soak in any more than it would here. I want a, I want a consistent surface to apply my watercolor, okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna grab, let's see, I have a few of these. Also, depending on the paint you use, especially mm -hmm. if there is no built-in top coat, that's even more important that you Absolutely. Yes, yeah, for sure. If you're working with a chalk paint, you definitely want to seal, you're gonna seal, Apply your transfer and seal again. Yes. And give it time. Give everything appropriate amount of time to dry. So these are just like little water water pens. And um, you fill them with water and then you squeeze them and they, it help, and you can move the paint around. So let's see, we're going, I kind of want to keep similar colors so um, these are these are little India ink markers. Again, I mean, if you walk down, if you walk down like an 
like an art supply aisle there are so many people doing like illustrating and there are just so many different brands of these types of pens that you can use so i don't want you to feel like oh if i don't have this particular it's one sad. it's not going to work because so, you just randomly yeah chose, right? so i'm just kind of scribbling in a little bit i and i like i'm going to work like kind of darker to lighter and even if you can come over top it might help and then I'm going to take my it's my just a little shadowy. Is it? That's uh -huh. okay. No, it's fine. It's not bad. It's just. And again, I'm just going for a very loosey goosey, really soft. And as I work out to the outer petals, see that little bit of ink is thinning out more and more. But look at how nicely that slides over the finish. Okay, so very, very pretty. I could add, um, I could add, let me add just a little touch of orange in here. This, oh my gosh, you can just get so creative with this. Oh, so pretty. And you could even darken it up a little. But really and truly, if you took one color, we're gonna do this one down here. If you took one color and just allowed your water to thin it out, you can get different shades. This is Winter's Song Wreath, Bethann. Okay, so this was still kind of wet, but see how I'm just moving it with my... Sorry, Elena, I'm not sure why that's happening. It could be also your internet. Is that happening for anyone else that our voice doesn't match the video? Also, you may that be happens. Seeing, you also might be hearing my voice. Our voices are similar. <laughs> you know? You might just be getting a delay. Sometimes yeah. that happens. Um, okay, so see, I just put the ink down around the center, and I'm just using my water to move it out to the outside. But see how then it it lightens up that pigment as I move out. See that? Mary asks, can you paint molds this way? Oh, that's a really know. good question. I think you would have to paint them yes. and seal them, but that is a really, really great idea, Mary. We'll have to try that. I am definitely going to try that. I think that could be so fun. But look at the shading. I mean, again, just very, very loose. Um, Sandy said she went out and came back in and the voice is matching up. Beautiful. Be Let's do this. Yeah, those are so vibrant. They right? really are. But so you can, I mean, that's what's so awesome is like you can be your own artist. You can kind of do your own thing with these um, and create your own style. You can go bold and vibrant or you could do a more muted, soft, watercolory look. Carol says you can definitely paint the molded clay the same way. Great. Oh, Carol, I am now, I am, I want to try that. Especially when you think of like um, the roses, mm -hmm. heirloom roses. Oh, yes. How Even cool. He loves me. He loves me. Oh. Really, there's any one of them that would be really cool. That would be awesome. The birds. Yes, now I want to try that. Thank you. Maybe that's what you'll see us doing next time. You never know, right. So I'm just taking what's left on my brush here, and I'm just playing. Isn't it fun to watch other people paint? Yes. That's why Bob Ross like had such a great thing going on. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's meditative, relaxing. It really is. And inspiring. Yeah. All the good things. Yep. But I do. I think that this would be such a fun project that to do is with some friends. Winter song wreath. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty. A part of it. Yep. Just just one section. Oh, and I have these up here. Well, we'll go a little bit. We'll, we'll see what else we have here. I mean, you could totally make this like in with fall colors. Um, you could just do very vibrant. It's, it's, I always, when I did workshops with this, I always kind of called it like 
adult paint by numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Liz says, I used to paint black and white photos with food coloring. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? I've heard of that, Liz. Wow. I want to know what that looks I've like. I've heard of that. That is a trick from way, way back. Cool. So let's get a little brown in the inner here. I think these really look best when, um, to me, when you have a consistent palette of colors. Mm -hmm. Like now, I don't want to like throw a, a, a I don't Balloon. necessarily want to do a periwinkle big giant peony up here. I want to. No, but you might want to dot it here and there. That's what I, yeah, I'm thinking that's what I'll use for these little campanula shapes yeah. here, because that's what they look like to me. Um, and that could be a really nice little contrast. Mm -hmm. So we have this guy, and let's see. I think it's just got to be another peony color. Yeah, I think so. Let's see what's. Yeah. Ooh, no. No. I was just say, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I. It's just a great way to show you. Like, I can take my ink or my watercolor, my paint whatever you're using put a blob of it in the middle and then just work that out to the outer edges and that's going to give you that very watercolory look and still keep it kind of these are um yeah i don't even know if like they make india these anymore marker, right? yeah so it's an ink. india ink marker yep mm -hmm. and then just watercolor pens but see how i get that shading just by moving it around, moving that ink or that paint around. So you don't have to be like a, a perfect painter who, you know, um, um, knows how to blend and shade and all that. You can do on one color. And, but I like to keep like consistent. So I'm looking at like these long guys, these stems here, and I will want those to all be kind of the same color. Yeah. But you know what? You do you. You kind of do whatever makes you happy with these. But those are good tips, uh -huh. I think, for like people who are not experienced painting. Yeah, I'm not even going to use my pen with this. I'm just going to leave them as is. Let me um, put in just a little bit of ferny. And again, this is just to add a little color. Um, I don't need... It's okay to leave some black and white, too. I think that's cool, too. Yeah, I do, too. And it's okay to go outside the lines. It's almost preferred, I think. Mm hmm Like, if you try too hard to stay in the lines, that makes it, I just think it look like, look as yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I love, I love this. It's intentionally outside the lines, kind of. And it's good to vary your greens a little bit, too. But, you know, so you can kind of see what's happening now. I see a little bit of a bud here, which mm -hmm. is great because I, I think it needs a little um, yeah, brighter something. color down there. A coral? Do you have no, that? I'm going to kind of keep it almost the same as what's up here. Mm -hmm. Lovely. What do we think so far? Do we like it? Mm -hmm. So pretty. With these little, little guys, I just squeeze the water out. Oh, I think I've... Do you need some water? Nope. I have so many of these. <laughs> Here's another one. They're really fun to use. Okay, so I'm looking at these little um, these little guys here because I do think it needs that contrast. For sure. Just a little pop of contrast. So these. People call them bluebells mm -hmm. in, in the gardening world. We call them campanula. They come in all different colors, but...
But today, they're actually going to be blue mouths. But I can soften those, I can move that around. Just gives it just enough of that little bit of a contrast. So let's do um, one more thing. I, I really want to make sure that we get... Um, Whoa, really dark. So let's. Now you're going to have to add that color somewhere else. I know, for sure. I was just <laughs> thinking that. But you know, I think I, I will. Say, yeah, I let's, let's do, let's do right in here. I don't know what they are. They're little buds of some kind. Yeah. But it's kind of pretty. Even make it, like, mm -hmm. put it here mm -hmm. or something. An artist never makes mistakes, isn't nope. it? Just last night, my nine-year-old, he was drawing and had to scribble, scribble, scribble something, and he was upset, and he just turned it into a tornado scene and added little pieces Isn't of furniture. Awesome. Oh, my He was gosh. so proud. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> so I'm just adding a touch of this color here, but nothing fussy. Look at what actually, I did here. Actually, that looks lovely. I actually got my fingers or my my hands right in oh smudgy. I yeah ache. i guess you do have to watch out for that huh because it's quadery yeah it acts like it never happened unless you get up really close <laughs> <laughs> which no one should i but, can't see oh, it even from gosh this how pretty yeah. oh i just yeah. love this it gives you a chance to create your own Floral, for sure. I love it. Do you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, I don't know, can you grab a Sharpie yeah. from number seven? A touch of color on the very top corner, but I was looking at that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not done there is yet. It, is that a bird flying in, or what's going on? I think it's just a... A bud or a leaf of some kind so we're gonna thank you we're just gonna do it so like what I did here I used just a little strip of an IOD like a piece of typography from some transfer yeah you could add a vinyl here you could or you can just leave it but um, you could take a little bit of entomology etc if you wanted to and just cut a little strip out and and pop that in there that would be super cute She'll, I would imagine, Mama, stop me if I'm wrong, you'll seal it with the same sealer that you use, just a matte yes, acrylic. Yes, yep. Yeah, and it kind of depends on what you what you put on your piece, yeah, like what, what you're painting you with. Um, you know, if you're using a chalk style paint, it's definitely going to um, lighten up, and then you have to put a sealer over yeah. it to get it back to those pretty pigments. But here again, check this out. Um, right up here where I cut away, I'm just going to kind of draw in. And the way these are done makes it so, like, you, you do don't have, have to be, to be perfect now. It's no. like a line drawing, and you can just. Isn't that just. It. It's like it never happened. Yeah, for it's sure. Crazy. Yeah. So cool. So cool, you guys. Yeah, love it. So um, I'm seeing just a little touch of something here. I think we'll. We'll do a little brighter pink right here. I think I need to like add pink to this. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. I feel like the green leaf, but not the different the green leaf. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a little little bud. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Clear out those brushes. Isn't that fun? Oh, it's so fun. Well, I hope you guys all have a wonderful Easter, Passover, whatever you happen to celebrate. It's the first of spring right now, and um, it's just a great time that right after you do. to start thinking about um, just beautiful, beautiful artwork. Yeah, lovely.
so pretty. Look at, oh my gosh, like I, I would display all of these. You know, you could, let's take this away, but um, if they were just all done in a very simple black frame. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, so pretty. Or actually, wait, do I want yeah. it to go like, I want it to go like that. And then a fourth one. We'll figure one out that puzzle going later, there. but you get the idea. So pretty, you guys. Yeah. So yeah, have fun with these paintable tr transfers. This is like the best one to do it on. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, just a simple frame or if you, like I sure wouldn't do like four of these. That would be like way too much for me. But for somebody. Yeah, but I love the contrast in style that it I gives that. by yeah. doing this little checkerboard. And this you can do just, um, you know, you just mark off your squares and and paint them in, but it gives it a or whole... Or get the checkerboard tissue paper and bake a pencil. There you go. I've done that too. <laughs> but it, it really does give it um, a really fun, quirky I love it. contrast, yeah. right? Yeah. So have a wonderful, wonderful week, you guys. Go ahead. We'll, I'll pop back in a little bit later and check for questions and answer them if I find them in um, the comments. But um, we want to thank you for watching. It's been fun. And uh, go paint something really beautiful and use something wonderful with IOD. Have a Bye. good day, guys.